Mr. M presents Dilating Shapes. Hi everyone. In this quick video, we're going to take a quick look at how to dilate shapes. To understand what I mean by dilating shapes, though, we need to know what a scale factor is. A scale factor really is telling you how a shape is changing when you dilate it. The fact of the matter is, is that dilation means you're creating a similar shape, a shape that's exactly the same shape, including the same angle measurements, but not the same size necessarily. So when you're changing the size of a shape, but trying to keep it similar or keep it the exact same shape, uh, we need to use a scale factor to make sure that every part of the shape changes at, in the same way by a scale. The scales, we're using it in the same way that we'd use a scale on a graph, meaning uh, every uh, amount you uh, travel on a graph is equal to the same amount as the, travel, the bit that you traveled before. So in this case, uh, let's look at this triangle here. This triangle, ABC, could be dilated by a scale factor of 2, for example. That would mean that this shape was going to become twice as large as it was before. It would get much bigger because all the measurements would be multiplied by a factor of 2 meaning every measurement would be larger and it would be twice as large as it was before. On the other hand, we could also measure, uh, sorry, dilate the shape with a scale factor of one half. What that would mean is that we're literally shrinking this uh, shape in half. So we're cutting all the measurements involved in the shape down by one half, which would mean you would multiply by a zero decimal five or you would divide each measurement by two either way that you would get to a half measurement let's put this into practice and see what we've got so right now we've got a parallelogram w x y z with a dilation center p and a scale factor of two can you see p there carefully maybe i'll unlock that and raise that up so you can see it there it is that's better so back to our question, we want to dilate this uh, parallelogram, WXYZ, with a dilation center P and a scale factor of 2. Since the scale factor is 2, larger than 1, it means this shape is going to be getting larger. And since the factor is 2, it's going to be twice as large. All the measurements are going to be the same size. So there are two methods we can use to dilate this shape. The first one we can do if we have grid squares, and we do in this case. And so what we can do is we can figure out how many grid squares it is between our center point, P, and any of the points that we want to dilate. So for example, from P to Y, we have to go one, two squares to the right, and one, two squares up. So two and two. Now if we're going to multiply that by a factor of two, then it's going to become not 2 and 2, but 4 and 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. So we're actually going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 squares over, and 1, 2, 3, 4 squares up, and that is going to be our new point Y. And just like all our other dilations, sorry, just like all our other transformations, we actually have to call that point Y1, just to make sure we do that correctly. Point Y1. And there it is. So that's going to be our new point Y1. Now there's a trick to tell if we've placed our point in the correct place. What we can do is we can draw an arrow straight from point P up to point Y1, and what we should find is it travels through the original Y. It travels through that original point. And in this case, it does, which tells us that we've done it correctly. If it somehow didn't, then that would be a problem, and we would have to relook at our line. So there's our first point, Y1. Let's do the second point the same method. Let's do the point for X. So X is 1, 2, 3 points to the right and one, two, three, four, five squares up. So we're gonna multiply those by two, which means it's now going to be not three to the right and five up, it's going to be six to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten up, all the way up there. 
that's going to be our new point called x1 let's see where is it here called x let's forget not forget to add our one there it is Once again, let's do our test here with our dotted line. It should travel right through the X point, and it does. Great. Okay, so this is really working. The other method we can do is use the lines to help us, and then uh, sort of use a ruler to help us out. So what I mean by that is, since we're multiplying by a factor of 2, since we're multiplying by 2, I could, for example, draw a line just like we've done before, straight from P to Z. And then since I'm multiplying by a factor of 2, I know that my line needs to be twice that long. So I'm just going to clone a copy of that line. And I'm going to bring it right there. And I know that my point Z is going to be right here at the end. Z1 is going to be right at the end of my double line there. That works really well if I've got a factor of 2 or 3 or 4 because I can I know I just need to measure how long my line segment is and then I just need to draw that 3 times longer, 4 times longer, 2 times longer in this case and that's going to be my new point Z. Uh, so if I have a ruler handy I can do that. The good thing about that strategy is I don't need grid squares to help me because I'm using my ruler and I'm just measuring it out. The bad thing about that strategy is sometimes you're not going to get a completely all, a whole centimeter line. You're going to have to go into your millimeters, so you might end up having to multiply 43 millimeters times 2 or something like that. Not really that difficult, but you have to be very exact to make sure you get to the right spot. Let's use that same method for point W. Our last point. So there it is. That's dotted line to point W. And I'm going to double that line, bring that line up here, and this should be in just about the correct spot, yeah, pretty much, pretty accurate. Let's bring my dot up here, and that's going to be my new point, yep, you guessed it, W1. Let's bring that up here. So there you go. Now, it looks pretty good to me because, as you can see, all of my lines here, let's draw them out, travel straight through the original point to get to their new point. And that's a great sign because that means that I've kept my scale. If any of the lines were off from the original point by a lot, then it would mean that I had done that incorrectly. But right now, this is a good sign. It's looking pretty good that guy over a little bit there okay now I'm gonna actually just connect the dots I'll use a different color line for this one nice green line and actually connect the dots and what we should see is a shape that looks to be the exact same shape as my original but just a different size so let's see can you guys see that clearly I think it's pretty good so uh, how would I double check? Well, I could get out a protractor, and what I could do is I could pick two angles. Let's say the angle here for Y, the angle around Z here, and the angle around Z1. And I could check those two angles with a protractor, and they should be the same measurement. If they're not the same measurement, if they're very different from each other, then again, I have a problem. But as it looks right now, I think that I've got my shape done correctly. There's a lot of lines here. Let me erase our dotted lines here, just so you can see the shape of the two shapes without sort of it being blocked out. And maybe it's more obvious there. So take a look, and we'll sort of connect the dots with some blue here. Might be a little more obvious to see. And there you go. Pretty clear that my shape uh, W1X1Y1Z1 is similar to the original shape WXYZ, just much larger by a factor of 2. Now we're going to try the opposite, uh, and we're going to try and go a little faster here. So now I've got a triangle A, where's my A, B, C, 
Let's get those arranged here. A, B, C. And we're going to dilate triangle A, B, C to center uh, to square. Uh, sorry, point T, which is down here, point T. And we're going to dilate it by a factor of one half. Now, one half means that my shape is actually going to get smaller. All of my measurements are going to be cut in half. They're going to decrease. So again, we can use the same strategy. So I'm going to start out this time by drawing my dotted lines here. I'm not even going to wait. I'm going to draw my dotted lines right into point T. And sometimes, and this is one of those cases, you'll get a dotted line where it's almost the exact same over top of another dotted line. So that happens. It's not too big a deal. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, leave the dotted line for point A. We might not even need it. And first, we'll do the dotted lines for point B and point C on my uh, triangle. So what do I need to do? Well, again, I've got two strategies I could use. I could use these the grid squares, or I could use a uh, measurement. So let's try first with the grid squares. From point B down to point T, I'm going to draw out just straight lines here, and we'll count. So from point B down to point T, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares down, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares over. So I'm cutting those numbers in half. So basically what it means is I'm going to be looking to find a new point that is only four squares over to the left and four squares up from point T. So let's figure out if we can see where that is. I'm just going to erase these to make it a little more clear. So I'm looking to find a point that is four squares to the right. One, two, three, four, and four squares up again because I'm cutting those eights in half. And I've got a point here, and the extra good news is my point is right where I'd hope it would be, which would be right along that dotted line that connects point B to point T. So now I've got a new point. And that point is point B1. Great, so that's good news. That one worked. Let's get rid of these dotted lines so we don't get confused with them. And now let's try C, but let's try it in the other method. Uh, let's figure out about how long this line is, and let's try and cut this line about in half. So I'm going to uh, take this, we'll sort of draw this line out right here. I'm going to take this line away. I'm going to get a ruler. try and turn it. I thought I could twist it around. Can I twist it around? I don't know. thought I could turn this guy around. I'm going to try a different ruler. There's another one here that I like to use. There it is. Shrink it down a little bit. Let's see, make sure it's long enough to measure this shape. Okay. Put my line on there. And right now I'm measuring it at 13 centimeters. So I'm going to shrink this line down from 13 centimeters to a half of 13 centimeters. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, about 13 centimeters. So Shrink that line down. Half of 13 centimeters is 6.5 centimeters, so right about there. Okay, and I'm going to take this line now and put it back in its original spot. And as we can see, I've got a new point right here. That's halfway between those lines. Thanks, Ruler. See you later. And that line, that new point is going to be point C. One. All right, great. 
So there's the two different strategies. You should be already figuring out for yourself, you know, which one do you think you would like the best? Which one makes the most sense for you? They both are pretty good strategies to use depending on what you're most comfortable with. Now, I can do the same thing for A, but if I'm kind of picking up a pattern now, I can sort of start to see some patterns developing. So take a look at this with me and see if you can figure it out. The original B and C were four squares apart. But now that I've dilated the shape by a scale factor of one half, they're two squares apart. That's right. They were four. Now they're two. They're cut in half. Now let's look at A. A originally was four squares up from that center point in the triangle. Can you guess where it's going to be now? Well, it should be two squares up because that's half of four. Let's take a look and see if that actually works. I'm going to place a point right here. Okay, that point is going to become A1. Put that there. And does it travel through this final line? Yeah, let's draw a line from the center of T straight up through A to A. Does that work? It certainly does. You can't see it very well, but it goes straight through without any problems, so that's great. Now all I have left to do is connect the dots. So I'm going to go to the center of B, the center of A, center of A down to C, and center of C to B. And what I have is a nice new triangular shape. I'm going to give it some color so we can see it a little more clearly. Let's do a nice bright red. And there it is. So A1, B1, C1 has now been dilated by a scale of one half. It's all the measurements have shrunk by one half. It's one half the size it was before. So as you can see, there's two strategies you can use. Start deciding which it is. What you'll have to be comfortable with is obviously basic multiplication or multiplying by uh, or dividing with fractions. You'll have to sort of have some basic understanding of that. Shouldn't be too hard. You shouldn't have any real difficult ones at this point. Okay, take a look at this sort of time and neatness it took me to do these designs. If I don't do them correctly, I open myself up to a lot of mistakes. So you just have to be really diligent about doing a great job. Okay, happy dilating.